Hi everyone, this is Chris from Coconut Creek, Florida, and you're watching Trucker Josh on TJV. Morning everybody, how's my beard? I gotta shave this thing, this thing is getting a little wild, isn't it? It's okay, well maybe we'll do it today. We'll see. See if I can find me a chainsaw somewhere. <laughs> uh, anyways, we're here in Red Deer. We're about to make our delivery that we picked up in Jackson, Tennessee. We picked it up on Friday, it's now Wednesday. It's been a nice relaxing drive up here. Uh, about 3,500 kilometers or about, I'd say, 2,000 some miles. We stretched it out into like a nice four or four and a half day drive. But they want me here in 20 minutes, just around the corner. So I'm gonna go there now and hopefully I can at least start unstrapping so that we can actually start the unloading process at 8 a.m. when they wanted me here. Whew. So I had my granola bar, I had my, had my bottle of water. Let's go get this stuff off the trailer. So, I, like I was saying, I just parked around the corner. So, I don't got very far to go. I, uh, I drove past and walked past where I'm gonna be delivering right now, last night, so I knew which direction to come from and how I'm gonna get in there. So, I gotta go this way around to the right and I gotta drop the steel off down there. And then I gotta figure out why my phone is blown up right now. Isn't that interesting how that happens? As soon as you put it in gear and start rolling, that's when everyone wants to talk to you. <laughs> oh well, at least I'm not going far. It's gonna feel good to get this Tennessee steel off my trailer. So as soon as I'm empty, I rush over to Sundra, Alberta. About an hour and 45, two hours from here. I'll stop for a coffee, so probably two hours. Load up some lumber, tire down, don't have to tarp it, no nothing. Nice easy load and start ripping it home. We'll be home tomorrow. I, I can't make it home tonight. We're about uh, you know, 15, 16 hours from home and I can only drive 13 hours today depending on how much, how long this takes here yet, right? Because I've only got a 16 hour day starting from the point where my wheels started turning there. All right, so I'm just driving out onto the field here that we scouted out yesterday guys are are already here so that's awesome should be out of here in no time I like arriving about 20 15 minutes 20 minutes early that way we know I can get everything set up and we can get out of here as quickly as possible so here's the rest of the steel that someone else delivered here it's an interesting brand of boom truck that they're going to be unloading me with here what's that panoramic interesting oh, we got empty we just got here to our reload got an empty trailer behind us the tennessee steel is gone we're all dressed up, I'm about to replace that steel with Alberta lumber. Lumber that's going to Wisconsin, USA. I'm only taking it to Manitoba though, another driver's gonna take over from there. So I'm all checked in and I've got my directions. Apparently I've gotta go up aisle two or up number two and uh, come back and face west in number one. Oh, excuse me. So I don't need to go over the scale. I've been here before. So that always makes it a lot quicker. You don't have to explain everything to me five times. 
That's why you always gotta pay very close attention when you go to a new shipper. Pay very close attention so that the next time you go there, uh, they don't have to re-explain everything to you. Usually when you go to a new place, you gotta sit down through an orientation video or lesson or something and pass a little test before they'll let you uh, into their yard. That's why you get all these stickers on your hard hat. When you pass the test, they'll give you a sticker to put on your hard hat with an expiration date. And it's good for X amount of time. Usually a couple of years or so. So these guys are facing this way. I'm gonna go back around and face the other way in the next aisle over. the loaders are on break right now. I think it's lunchtime or something. They said they'll be back soon. Look at all this Alberta wood. There's always a lot of rules and regulations you gotta follow in these in these yards. Make sure you uh, show up and know all the rules and have all the proper equipment. Because they're not going to let you in if you don't. They're going to get very upset and maybe not let you in again if you don't listen. Give you a spanking. That'd be embarrassing. Get a spanking at the shipper. He'll probably spank you harder than your mama. Where's this guy going? I'm supposed to stop like right around here somewhere. He waved, but he didn't say that I should stop here. But if I need to be further forward, they'll tell me. Our beautiful lumber. This actually looks like kind of cheap lumber, but hey, I'm not, I don't judge, whatever. You're paying me to pull it. I don't make very much money off pulling lumber, but it gets me to uh, places where I do get paid a little more for hauling other stuff. So we can take what we can get. Lots of lumber always coming out of Western Canada. Tons of lumber. Lumber, lumber, lumber. Everybody needs lumber. You all gotta keep building stuff, right? Always building stuff. You know, I was talking like a couple of weeks ago how I, I really hope we don't develop our north. I I do hope we don't develop it. Like I'm, But I'm in a dilemma, you know? I was saying like, you know, we sort of need to coast and uh, at least for like our housing prices and stuff, so that our housing prices sort of just stay the same. You don't want to go down and lose money, but if they could just stay the same, and people, if people could just be okay and content with what we have, and be happy with what we have, and just sort of coast for a while, it would be good. But, uh, you know, that's never going to happen. People always want more and more and more, right? And I'm in a bit of a dilemma with that too, because, I mean, <laughs> I sort of depend on things growing. And always, you know, new buildings coming up so I can haul them the steel there to build the building and you know, new houses and, you know, decks and porches and whatever else people build with this lumber I'm pulling. I sort of depend on them needing me for that. So it's, it's a dilemma I face, you know? I guess I, nothing I can really do. I'm just another cog in the machine. We just got to keep the machine going. Got to keep all of our heads above water. We just got to keep treading water. Right, Diesel? Gotta keep treading water, man. Do you eat all your food? Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, we'll stop soon, buddy. You see anywhere to stop? You see anywhere to stop out here, man? This is Southeast Alberta. We're almost in Saskatchewan. This is all we're gonna be looking at for the next like 12 hours, at least. With a little break when we hit Regina, you know, I get a little bit of scenery for a little bit. Not really. It's a beautiful day. Sure is windy out here though. Here's our lumber. See what I mean? It's not very fancy lumber. Definitely doesn't need a tarp or anything. But eh, economy lumber, that's what they call it. Economy lumber, you know. The cheap. 
wind messing with the mic? I don't know if it is or not. So this lumber is going down to Hortonville, Wisconsin, USA. Somebody down there needs some Canadian wood. I'm not the guy to bring it down to him, actually. Now, I'm going to be bringing this to the yard, like I said. And someone else is going to continue on from there because I'm getting new drive tires. But I've been looking at my drive tires recently. I think I might only be getting four new drive tires this month. And I'm going to wait another two months until December or something, in a couple of months. And then get the next four. Because I still have four tires on here that aren't too bad. They're actually doing pretty good. So I think I want to get a little, a little longer out of them. I want to get a few more miles out of them. So I might just get four. I also got to get my interior fan replaced. See, they're getting pretty low. I have a, a measuring device that measures the tread depth, and they're still good, but they're they're close, you know. It's time to replace them, and I, I think I might just keep my four best ones. Like I got some arm here. We'll crawl underneath here. We'll take a look at this here. Like this one definitely needs to be replaced right away. It's like it's getting replaced on Monday. But this one isn't too bad yet. I could probably get away with another couple of months on these tires. But I'll take my worst four and replace them. But I mean, I'll ask the tire guys when I get there. They're the experts. And either way, they're gonna get the money out of me. It's just either they get it all out of me now or they tell me I can wait to buy half of them in December. Just stretch it out a little bit. Then I don't have to buy eight ones all at once. And, uh, you know, I paid for them at one point. I'd like to get as much out of them as I possibly can. So we'll see what happens. I'll get them to take a look at it. And if they figure that I have to replace them all at once, well, then we'll do that. But for now, let's just uh, let's focus on getting home. And then we're going to worry about these tires on Monday. Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Right now, I just stopped in here for a late night coffee. And I wanna go a little further down the road yet. I still have four hours and one minute available to me to drive today. And I wanna make tomorrow as easy of a day as possible so I got energy when I get home yet. So, the plan is to go as far as we can tonight. And then probably sleep a little later tomorrow, but I'll have less distance to go. So I might only start at like 10 in the morning or nine in the morning, but I'll be home in like five hours instead of having to drive a full day. Get what I mean or am I not making any sense? It's okay, be honest with me. I don't make sense all the time. I just go with it already, I just run with it. Just accept it. Let's get back on the road and uh, so we're swift current. I'm thinking we could make it to Balgoni. I think we might be able to make it to Balgoni, but at least to Moose Jaw. At least to Moose Jaw. I have no idea. Meters. Take the freeway entrance on Highway 1 East. See Karen, you got the right idea. You know, one step at a time. I always try to live too far in the future. One step at a time. And just gotta get back on the highway for now and worry about where we get to later. What's that little sign say over there? Karen Port, Saskatchewan. I never actually stayed the night here. It's a husky here. I've actually never even noticed there is a truck stop here. The first for everything. 200 meters, turn right on. First Avenue and then turn right in 130 meters. Alright, so I guess I gotta find a place to park here. And call it a night. I don't even know where the parking lot is, it's so dark. I don't want to shine my light in these guys' cabs. But at the same time, I need to see where I'm going. Huh. 
So right in front of me here, like right beside the truck stop, is Briarcrest Bible College. I'm not sure how many are you of you are familiar with that place, but I had a friend of mine from high school that went here. Never actually been in this town. I've driven past it all the time because you see they're like, they're big college. Sort of looks like a, a little bit of a cathedral almost. They have it all nicely lit up and everything. It's behind the trees and around the corner right now. But uh, maybe we'll see it in the morning. I'm a little bit tired right now. Yeah, I've never actually been here before. I was looking on my GPS here. Karen was telling me that there was a travel plaza here. And I was like, no, Karen, there's no travel plaza there. We got to keep going to Moose Jaw. Moose Jaw is another 20 kilometers up the road. Uh, apparently, I was driving past here. I was like, well, let's go check it out anyways. You know, she says there's a travel plaza here. Let's go see. It's not really a travel plaza. It's more of just like a gravel parking lot with a convenience store next to it that only that closes at night. It's only open during the day. So it's not a 24 hour travel plaza or anything, but eh, it's, uh, it's kind of like an old school Western Canadian truck stop. I like it. So I parked at the back all by myself. I'm gonna put my screens in my windows. Temperature's perfect. It's 14 degrees Celsius out right now. One second. Okay, okay, Google. What is 14 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 14 degrees Celsius is equal to 57.2 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is the perfect temperature for me to fall asleep in. If I was in like a tent right now, it's just be the perfect. I like it nice and cool and chilly to fall asleep in. So I'm going to put the screens in the windows and open up the vents. It's cold enough that there's no mosquitoes and no bugs. But it's warm enough that you're not going to freeze your nipples off. So it, it's it's going to be a good night. I can feel it already. So we stopped here at about 10.30 p.m. Now we're in mountain time right now. So that's 11.30 p.m. Central time back home. In eight hours from now, I can get moving again. See if I get up in eight hours or not. I kind of really want to go home, so it probably will. Uh, that would be what? 10, 30, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6.30 mountain time or 7.30 home time. And uh, we got 700 kilometers left to go. <sighs> okay, Google. What is 700 kilometers in miles? 700 kilometers is equal to 434.96 miles. There you go. That's what we got to do tomorrow yet. So thanks for watching. If you liked my videos, please, please do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. It does a lot more than you think. Hit the share button. That does more than anything. Uh, hit the like button if you liked the video. Like I said, if you hated it, hit the down vote. Uh, Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want me to talk about or some topics you want me to cover. Or if you just want to say hi, go for it. That's what the comment section's for. Just give her, let her rip. Let me hear what's in your head. I know that's a dangerous thing to ask of some of you, but you get to hear what's in my head all the time. And hey, you guys are still alive. So hey, let me hear it down below in the comment section. I'm going to bed right now, though. I'm tired. I'll talk to you in the morning in tomorrow's vlog. See you then.